Let's talk the game. Let's talk. Two changes made by Croatia. Two changes. In the end, it turned out to be the right move by Dalic, right? They won the game on penalties. So Croatia won, Brazil won. Croatia winning the match on penalties. They scored all their penalties. Brazil missed two. Give it up for Havatska. Two changes made. Two changes by Zlatko Dalic. Pashalic coming in. He came in for Petkovic. Borna Sosa came back for Borna Barisic. And Croatia had to defend for most of the game. I know they had a couple of chances. Nothing crazy. One or two look-ins. Perisic early on in the game after Juranovic run forward. Give it up to Josip Juranovic. He's been good at the World Cup. And remember before the World Cup or... Uh, after the 2018 World Cup and between that period of rebuilding, Croatia's, their problem was in the fullback positions where Vasalik or Shimi Vasalik was always injured over on the left side. Remember, they never really had anybody over there after Ivan Strinic picked up that injury back in 2018. And there was another player playing there. I can't even remember his name, man. He just fell off the globe. Can't remember his name. But... He was actually filling in for Strinic after Strinic had that heart problem. So Croatia had that fullback issue. But bringing in Borna Sosa, shout out to Barisic as well. And Juranovic, Josip Juranovic, he has really, really revolutionized that right back spot for Croatia lately. And they had all sorts of people playing there, all sorts of fill ins playing there. You play there, you play there, you play there. So they sorted that out. And a player by the name of Yashko Gavardiel emerged and really showed up the back line for Croatia. Dominik Livakovic, who was a deputy for um, Daniel Šubašić back in 2018, he, he, he's, he's full, of, full of errors. For Dinamo Zagreb, full of errors in the Champions League. But for Croatia this time around, the man has not made one mistake all World Cup. I can't remember. If he made any mistakes, inconsequential, inconsequential. And he deserves a lot of credit for what he did in the last penalty shootout and for pick big saves, save after save after save in this match against Brazil because if it wasn't for Livakovic, this game would have been done a long time ago. This game would have been done approximately about 30, 15, this game, uh, maybe an hour ago. It would have been over. It would have been over. The Croatians would have went to bed early. The Brazilians would have been out in the streets of Rio and other cities in Brazil. None can come to mind right now. Partying. Partying. The fans in Qatar would have been partying. While the Croatians would have been packing their bags, looking to go back to their families, enjoy a little break vacation before going back to their clubs but defending defending frustrating the brazilians who couldn't pass that defense that seemed impregnable for most of the game chance saved by livakovic the yashko Vardial almost you know own goal and then neymar getting in behind numerous numerous goals he scored he's um he he's he stopped Let's give, I, I saw this picture on Twitter. I have to find this picture on Twitter to show you guys. Let me find this picture right now on Twitter to show you guys Livakovic and what he did in this game. I need to show you guys because this is, this is really key. This is key. Let me show you guys something and you see exactly what I'm talking about. This is the man that got Croatia in the semifinals right now. Livakovic. Look at that. He's been big. This is the guy. This is the guy. And ESPN FC said, build Dominic, my namesake, Livakovic, a statue in Croatia. No keeper has made more saves than him at the World Cup. I was talking about Chesney. I was talking about um, Jan Sommer, Alison Becker. And I, I didn't even think about actually 
putting his name up for the best keeper at the World Cup. And right now, right now, let me think. Yeah, him, he's up there. Bonu, he's up there as well. But it's him. It's really him. Bonu of Morocco and Livakovic for, for, for the great work they've done so far. But it, it is Livakovic that leads the charge because he's in the semi-final. Wow. Give it up to my boy Football Farah. He just hit me up. What does he say? Um, Football Farah coming in with the, the text message. My phone don't want to open right now. Oh, my Santa. My Santa hat is actually blocking my... Football Farah says madness. It has to be madness. It has to be madness. This is madness. This is absolute madness right now. This is madness. So... Croatia keeping out Brazil, chance after chance after chance. Not like if Brazil had 20 chances, but whatever chances Brazil did produce, whatever magic they work and got in behind that very tight, watertight Croatian defense, Livakovic said, thou shall not pass. Thou shall not pass. And another thing I have to give the Croatian players a lot of credit for, is the stamina and the concentration levels throughout the match. Juranovic, Sosa, Gavardiel, Lovren, the midfield engine that never seems to die of Kovacic, Modric, Brozovic, Perisic, Kramaric, Pasolic, even though some of these guys was taken off, big up to the guys who came on and did their thing. But, Brazil, you got to give him some credit, right? When Tite brought on Anthony and take off Rafinha, who I think should have never started a game, right? Anthony changed the match, even though he was diving around and eventually it was probably him that gave away the ball that led to Croatia going up the other end to score. He changed the game. He really added impetus to that Brazilian attack. And Brazil got their goal. It was a deserved goal, I have to say. And Croatia looked a bit, you know, distraught. It looked like they were going to resign to losing the game 1-0. Just for a second, I saw Modric put his head down a bit. And, like, they couldn't believe that they had put up, put up such a fight. And they were undone by such a beautiful goal by Neymar. Because Brazil just kept making these attacking changes. Pedro Gimarel coming on for Richarlison. Rodrigo for... Um, Vinicius, Anthony for Rafinha. They just kept making these changes. And after they got the goal, they made some defensive changes where Fred and Alexandro came on. So you, 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 you ask yourself, should Brazil have gone on for the other, tried to get more goals, right? Because at that moment, Croatia would have been vulnerable trying to get, get a goal to come back in the game and not changing anything at all would have allowed you to get behind that Croatian defense again and score. But they did. But Livakovic was in the way. And that Croatian goal, I was actually preparing to talk about a Brazilian win, guys. I was. I was. It's not the way I wanted to actually do the post-match analysis, to be completely honest, because it wasn't the most entertaining of matches. But the game... The game went from a snooze fest, as someone said earlier, to a banger. Croatia equalizing to Petkovic, who has not scored in God knows when for Croatia. He has not scored for a long time. Bruno Petkovic, and you, 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 you see, you, you want to wonder why is he in the freaking team if he's not scoring? He's not putting him in the back of the net. Why does Zlatkadalic keeps picking him? Why does he keep picking him? And we see why. We see why he, he came up clutch in that moment because, look, a corner attack by Croatia. Brilliant, 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 <laughs> brilliant counterattack. Brilliant counterattack. And Mislav Osic, man. Mislav Osic. What's that Mislav Osic with the, with the assist, right? I want to make sure... I get this right. I, I don't want to make any mistakes right now. Yes, Mislav Orsic with that square. 
to Petkovic in space because Brazil were caught attacking and they were Croatia caught them on a counter attack. And what a finish by Petkovic. Marquinhos, he put his body up in the way. It got deflected and beat Allison. I said this time and a time in my previews, when you're playing against a team that is historically better than you are, you take shots, you take chances because a deflection, it could hit an arm, it could hit a leg, it could hit something and end up in the back of the net. You have to take chances. You got to ride your luck. And I'm not saying Croatia were lucky today because they weren't. This was not one unlock. This was not, the, I think, the Japan game where they were very lucky or the Belgium game where they got lucky. This was the Japan game. They weren't. It, it was it was Livakovic. But the Belgium game where they were lucky. And you think back to the Belgium game, like Croatia, they've been playing with fire. And you know what? Doesn't Vertreni? Doesn't Vertreni means fire? Does Vertreni does mean fire, right? <laughs> Vertreni, but Vertreni does mean fire. You know what I'm saying? I think Vertreni does mean a flame or something like that. So they've been playing around with fire for some time. They have been playing around with fire for some time, and it's amazing that they've got to this point and. They've actually got to the semifinals. I want to actually share something with you here. Big up to each and everybody in the house. Bruno Petkovic and his record for Croatia. 26 matches, 6 goals. We're going to click and we're going to see the last time he scored a goal for Croatia. I think his career started very, very well. And then it kind of, you know, dipped off a bit. So Bruno Petkovic, right? These are his games for Croatia. These are his games, right? And... He has not scored. The last time he scored was in 2020, the Nations League in a 4-1 loss versus Portugal. We scroll down, we scroll down, no more goals, no more, no more until the game against Brazil. Look, 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 he's been playing. He's been playing. Look at that. Not in the squad, but he's been playing. Zaka Dalic just keeps persisting with this guy. You know what I'm saying? He started off his career very well. I think in his first, let me say, his first seven games, he had about six goals. His six goals was actually scored in his first five, six, seven, eight, eight appearances, which is absolutely nuts. And then he did not score any until today. So it, 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 just, it, it just makes you wonder, like, Everything just, oh man, everything just meant to be. Everything just meant to be, man. Wow. What? This is unbelievable. This is absolutely unbelievable. This is unbelievable stuff. This is stuff of dreams, guys. It happened in 2018 and it's happening all over again. This happened in 2018 and it's happening all over again. How are they doing it? How are Croatia doing this? I don't get it. I absolutely don't get this. I don't get it, man. I don't get this because this is Brazil. They say Jogo Bonito. They play the beautiful game, the samba, the dancing. You know, it's so easy. It comes so easy to them. You know what I'm saying? Silky football. You know what I mean? Silky. Let's get this. They, they basically, they basically dance. Ooh, yeah. They dance straight into the back of the net. You know what I'm saying? Against everybody. This is this is it. This is Brazil. This is Brazil, the entire World Cup. You know what I'm saying? They did it in 2018. They left 2018. They never stopped dancing. Bam. They lost the Copa America final. They kept dancing. And I'm not, listen, I, I love dancing. I don't have a problem with dancing. This is just how Brazil play. And then they meet Croatia. And then... The dancing stops and the crying starts. The dancing stops and it's just crying. Wow. Well, if you go back and you watch my preview, my preview, I'm like, no way, <laughs> no way. 
I didn't even think, I didn't even think that this game would get this far into extra time, much less to penalties. I never thought that. I never predicted that. And I don't think most of us predicted that. Maybe some. Maybe some. And I give you guys the credit for sticking to the team. But the last two matches I predicted against Croatia. And they've proven me wrong. Twice. And if we go back to 2018, I don't think I predicted Croatia to get out the group. I predicted against them in maybe all the games. Maybe all the games. And they got to the final. And the mistake I probably made was I think I predicted Croatia to win the final. If I go back and I check my prediction, I think I predicted. Croatia, look, I love you, but I'm not going to predict you to win anything anymore. I'm predicting against Croatia in the semifinals. Just remember that. Because whoever they meet, they are not the favorite. Whether they meet Argentina or they meet the Netherlands, they're not the favorite to win that game either. But knocking out Brazil would give them belief that they could beat anybody in the world right now. Anybody. Bring them on. Bring it on. Bring it on. What a team. No pretty, pretty, stylish, nothing. No. No, 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 no. That's not their style. That is not Croatia's style. They're not pretty. They're not pretty, and you're not going to want to, oh, let me go watch this Croatian match because I'm going to be so entertained. No, you're not going to get that. You're going to get dogged, tenacious, never say die kind of football. You're going to get fiery football. Fiery. And that's what Vatreni means, right? The team embodies that Vatreni spirit. This is crazy. I never listen. I'm sweating right now. I never expected. I was supposed to be, listen to me, guys. I was supposed to be taking a nap right now, literally a nap, because I thought Brazil were gonna waltz or samba into the semis. But the Croatians stepped up. And they took those penalties brilliantly. Vlasic, Lovomaya, Luka Modric, and Mislav. Oh, shit, stand up! Because Rodrigo, he missed his penalty. Marquinhos, he missed his penalty. Give it up to Pedro, Casimir for scoring theirs. But Croatia 4. Brazil, two, in pens, 1-1 one, one after extra time. Croatia advanced to the semis for the third time in their World Cup history, having only debuted in 1998. Croatia missed one World Cup, right? So they were there, 22, 18, 14, 10. I think they missed, did Croatia miss 2000? Croatia missed 2010, right? I think Croatia missed 2010. So they might have qualified for maybe seven World Cups so far. I think Croatia missed 2010, right, guys? Did they? They missed one of those World Cups. But God damn. God damn. Guys, Brazil. 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 It's not Japan, you know. This is Brazil. This is not. Listen. Listen. Listen, this, this is Brazil. This is not, look, look. This is, this is Brazil. This is Brazil. This is Godzilla. Not Barney the dinosaur, but Godzilla. <laughs> oh my God. Listen, you got to be kidding me. You got to be kidding me. But listen, man, big up everybody in the house. What a game. What a game. Give it up to Croatia.